equations of conic sections, as well as a few other types of equations, can be represented with this starting equation, which looks a little monstrous, but all that it is is a way to represent having an x squared term or a y squared term, a regular x term, first degree x term, or first degree y term, a constant, and possibly a term that has x and y both. These are all the possible terms that we can have using an x, x squared, a y, a y squared, or just a number by itself. So a, b, c, d, e, and f are all being replaced by numbers when we get to specific equations. And let me give an example to you of how these things work. We could say, let b, c, and e equal 0. Which terms will be left when we consider some of these coefficients to equal 0? Well, if b equals 0, this an entire term equals 0. Same with c, and same with e. So basically, we would be left with only a, d, and f. And those terms correspond to terms with an x squared, first degree x, and a constant, a number by itself. So an example, if we throw in numbers for a, d, and f, could be 1x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. And here we can see we have a quadratic equation with one variable. A different example, what if we said b, d, and e equals 0? Now we are left with a, c, and f. What happens when we put some numbers in place of a, c, and f? This ought to look like the equation of a circle. And definitely, if we add 16 to both sides, we see x squared plus y squared equals 16, an equation of a circle with a center right at the origin, and the radius equals 4. So as we try to differentiate between different types of equations, when they're starting out in this form, we'll need to pay attention to some of the specific coefficients. And we will summarize exactly what we need to know. But let's squeeze in one more example real quickly. What if b and c equal 0? We would be left with ax squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. Can we recognize what this equation will represent? What sort of shape? I would recommend first finding where we have our squared variables, because circle, ellipse, hyperbola all have x squared and y squared. I'd want to notice that this equation has an x squared, but not a y squared. And that's the case when we have a parabola. So this equation, I'll need to visually recognize what squared variables we have to help identify what equation I'm trying to make. So let's throw in some numbers for an example. 2x squared plus 12x plus y minus 8 equals 0. I know that completing the square is going to be a required step. So let's begin to solve this equation for y and complete the square for x. So I'm moving the y and the, and the constant negative 8 over to the right side so I can do work to complete the square on the left side. We need to factor out this 2 first. We can only complete the square when our leading term is x squared. Now, our middle coefficient here, 6, we cut in half and square it to give us positive 9. We need to keep this equation balanced, so when I'm working a parabola equation, I'm balancing it to both sides. But one other detail here, remember, we used a plus 9 to complete the square, but this plus 9 is actually an 18, because it's being multiplied by this 2 in front of the parentheses. So we'll balance it with plus 18 on the right side. So we're working to complete the square choosing the constant that we needed, we have to balance it with a constant on the other side. Now let's write this in factored form, x plus 3 squared. The 2 is still factored out front. Let's bring the constant 26 over to the left side. And the last move, just a detail that we'd like to solve for y, but right now we're looking at negative y. So I will flip the signs of each term to get negative 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 26 equals positive y. And now I can go and make a graph. I can see that the vertex of this parabola will be at the ordered pair negative 3, 26. Remember, this form is x minus h plus k, so negative 3, 26. Now, to find the quantity p, which we discussed a couple of videos ago, we are not quite in the form that does that. That form was 
x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. So we need to move our constant 26 over to the right side. That will leave us with negative 2 times x plus 3 squared equals y minus 26. And now we'll divide both sides by negative 2, or move it to the right side and use the reciprocal. So now we are in the proper form to be able to identify this coefficient right here, negative 1 half, as equal to the value for p. Solving for p, we get negative 1 eighth. Now it's negative because we do like to think of p as what is the distance to move from the vertex to the focus. Since we have a negative number, that's an indication that our parabola is opening down. So from the vertex, move down 1 eighth of a unit to get to the focus. How about even we take a quick look at this graph? Here's the graph of this equation, negative 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 26. There's our vertex at negative 326, and it opens down because we have a negative coefficient. So now let's break down exactly what we need to observe of these coefficients, a, b, c, d, e, and f, to help us determine what sort of shape we have. Like this one, we could see we had an x squared but no y squared. That's definitely a parabola. But since ellipse, circle, and hyperbola all have both x squared and y squared, we need to get into a little bit more detail about these coefficients a through f. Beginning with this form, let's first talk about a circle, where we know we have equations like x squared plus y squared equals 16. The pattern that we see with every equation of a circle is that a and c are equal. If we see that they have the exact same coefficient, it means we're looking at the equation of a circle. If a and c do not equal each other, it could be a hyperbola, it could be an ellipse. If they have the same sign, both positive or both negative, then we have an ellipse. But if they have opposite signs, one positive, one negative, we'll end up with a hyperbola. So we'll go through several examples where we start with equations that are in a form similar to this, and we get them into the standard forms that we've just been looking at with the graphs to be able to make the graph very easily. Let's take this example. x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 6y plus 6 equals 0. First of all, which conic section is it? It has x squared and y squared, so it's not a parabola and x squared and y squared have the same coefficient, positive 1, so it must be a circle. Let's group together the x's and the y's and begin completing the square. The constant I'm moving over to the right side, from positive 6 over to negative 6. Completing the square with the x's, this positive 2 cut in half equals 1, and then squared equals 1, so we're adding 1, both sides to keep it balanced. For the y's, the 6 cut in half and squared equals 9, so let's add that to the right side also. Next, we're writing these quantities, these expressions, in factored form. This is an x plus 1 squared, and the y's, it's a y plus 3 squared. On the right side, we're looking at a positive 4. Now we're ready to make the graph. First, find the center. We know we're looking at these numbers in the parentheses, but since our form is x minus h and y minus k, we know that the coordinates for the center are negative 1 and negative 3. Next, we need to find our radius. Since this back here is the radius squared, it means our radius equals 2. So I'll go horizontally 2 to the right and to the left, vertically 2 up and down, and try to finish it off with a nice round circle looking shape. So it's nice to be able to make the graph by hand, but at the very least we should be able to work the equation to this point so that we could state that the center is at negative 1, negative 3, and that the radius equals 2. Let's hit some more examples. Here's the next example. What sort of conic section do we have? Again, there's an x squared and a y squared, but now the coefficients are not equal, so we do not have a circle. But they are both positive. We have an ellipse. Let's begin completing the square. Group together the terms with x, and then the terms with y, and I'll move the constant to the right side. Next, to complete the square, we need to factor off the coefficient of the x squared, or the y squared. 
starting with the x, 4 factored out leaves us with x squared minus 8x. And from the y variable, factoring out a 5 leaves us with y squared plus 12y. Now we're identifying the missing constant to complete the square. Seeing a negative 8 coefficient, we will cut it in half and square. So cutting in half to negative 4, squaring to a positive 16. But we do not balance it with a 16 on the right side because this 16 is actually being multiplied by this 4 out in front of the parentheses. 4 times 16 is 64. So balance it with 64. Similar idea is going on with the y's. Cut in half to make 6. Square to get 36. But it's actually a 36 that's being multiplied by 5, which equals 180. So balance it with a 180 on this side. Now let's begin to clean up these completed squares. Keep the factored coefficient outside of the parentheses and just focus on the trinomial in the parentheses. And cleaning up the constants on the right side, we end up with positive 20. Now up to this point, we haven't talked about what our next step would be. What I need you to remember is that we know we're dealing with an ellipse and the form of those equations had a fraction added to another fraction, but what did it equal? It always equaled 1. So if you think about that our right side needs to equal 1, our next step could be divide everything by 20. Divide everything by the number we see back here on the right side to make it equal to 1. That's our motivating move right now. Make this equation equal to 1. So whatever we see this number is, divide everything by that number. It will make that right side equal to 1. And now let's look at simplifying our coefficient with that denominator of 20. So now we're beginning to see that familiar fraction. y plus 6 squared over 4. How about our leading fraction? This one is over 5. Now we're in a great form to begin making the graph. First, identify the center. x minus 4, so our x-coordinate is positive 4. The y-coordinate, negative 6. The center, positive 4, negative 6. Next, it's an ellipse, so we know we'll be going horizontally a number of units different from our vertical number of units. Let's see, the larger number is under the x, the 5, remember we're doing square roots, so moving horizontally about 2.2 units from this point we identified as the center. Vertically, under the y variable, we see a 4, so we know that we're looking for the square root 2 up 2 and down 2. It's an ellipse, so we're ready to connect those points and have our finished graph. Let's do one more example. Which conic section will be graphed from this equation? We're focusing on the x squared and y squared terms, and their coefficients are not equal. The coefficient of y squared is 1, but the coefficient of x squared is negative 1. Very important that we spot that. So it's definitely not a circle, and it's not an ellipse. When these coefficients have different signs, it is a hyperbola. So we'll go through our steps here, but we'll see how similar they are to the other two examples we just looked at. We're completing the square. Now it is in this order with the y squared first. I'll just keep it that way. y squared minus 10y. I do need to be paying attention to the sign, so this is a negative x squared plus 2x. And we'll move the negative 60 over to the right side. So far, very similar to what we did with the last example. Next, we're beginning to complete the square. So what third term do we need here to complete the square? A negative 10 cut in half to get negative 5, and squared gives us positive 25. We didn't factor anything out, so this is just a standard 25 that will balance on the other side, a positive 25. Now what about the x terms? We do like to complete the square when we have a positive x squared. So the way we handle this negative is like what we did with the previous example where we had a 4x squared or a 5x squared. We just factor it out. So I'm factoring the negative sign off so that I can look at a positive x squared to complete the square. Factoring that negative out will change the sign of the, this positive 2x term also, so be cautious. What we're doing here is saying to complete the square you need a positive squared term that has a coefficient of positive 1, 
and right now we actually have a negative x squared. So we factor it out of all the x terms. That leaves us with the x squared minus 2x. Now let's complete the square. Cutting it in half will give us negative 1, and squaring it gives us a positive 1. And just like last time, we had to be cautious of anything we factored out. So this is actually a negative 1 that we've put on the left side. So balance it with a negative 1 on the right side. Let's start to clean things up and write our completed squares. y minus 5 squared. Now we've got minus x minus 1 squared equals 84. We know we are after a hyperbola where we see the equation equals 1. So the last move would be to divide every term by 84 to make that last number equal exactly 1. So we are now left with this equation of the hyperbola. y minus 5 squared over 84 minus x minus 1 squared over 84 equals 1. So what do we know from the equation in this form? We know we have a center. The x-coordinate of the center is always found in parentheses with the x. So this is x minus h and y minus k. Even though we see the y first, we always find the x-coordinate of the center with the x, the y-coordinate of the center with the y. So x minus h means h is 1, and y minus 5 means k is 5. So our center is at 1, 5. Let's get that down. Next, a squared and b squared are both 84. So a and b both equal square root of 84. And because we're making a graph, let's just get this decimal approximation. It looks like it's going to be a little bit more than 9. It's actually about 9.2. So now our steps for the hyperbola will be to see 9 point units to the right and left and up and down. It looks like we're going to need a better graph right here, but we're just going to eyeball it. 9 and a little bit more, and to the left 9 and a little more. Up and down, same thing. Next we are making the box. Now if, if this was an addition here, we would be completing the shape and it would be exactly like a circle because we've gone the same distance out in all directions, but it's a subtract, so we have a hyperbola, so we need to finish it up with the box and the asymptotes. We've got the box and some asymptotes. Now where do we put the branches? Here's where it comes into play that the y variable was first. We're used to seeing hyperbolas that had x squared as the first term and a minus y squared, but since we've got the y first and minus x squared, the transverse axis is the vertical axis we'll be making our branches on the top and bottom. So there's our crude sketch by hand, and let's take a look at an actual nice looking graph of this equation, just so we can compare it to what we've got here. And here is the graph of that hyperbola. 